Okay guys, so this is simple covalent bonding and if you haven't watched the metallic bonding video to do with boiling and melting points, watch that first because that's designed to be the first in this little series of videos. So first of all, these have got a very, very, very low boiling and melting point. It is the lowest. And how we're going to explain that is using the exact same structure as we would for anything else, just these four bullet points. So what type of structure do they form? They form simple covalent molecules. They're simple as opposed to all the others which were giant, because with all the others I could just keep on building it up and keep on adding more and more stuff to my molecule. That is not the case with this. With simple covalent, you have a finite size to your molecule. And once you've got that, you can't make it any bigger or any more complex. That's why it's simple. And so this word molecules rather than structure is quite a telling one. That's, that's something we need to talk about. So what holds them together? Now, if I take water as an example, each of my water molecules, in fact, let's use hydrogen. Easier. Each of my hydrogen, hydrogen's diatomic, so it'll be H2, each of my hydrogen molecules has a covalent bond within it. But if I draw two hydrogen molecules, there is not a covalent bond between the molecules. That cannot happen. Hydrogen is only capable of making one covalent bond. So that is it for my molecule. It can't get any bigger. That's what I was trying to say earlier. You can't build it up any bigger than what it is. So what kind of bonds do I have between my molecules? Well, the answer is none. You can never have a bond between two molecules. That's an oxymoron. It makes absolutely no sense. If I had a bond between two molecules, I would not have two molecules. I would have one big molecule. So it wouldn't be a bond between. So don't ever start talking about the bonds between the molecules. That can never happen ever, ever, ever in the history of forever. So we don't do that. What we can have, though, is forces between molecules, which are very, very similar to bonds, but not the same. So we're going to have forces between them. Now, there's actually three types of these, what we call an intermolecular force. Inter means between, molecular, molecule, so between molecules, intermolecular. So these intermolecular forces, they come in three types. Now I'm not going to go into them now, I'm just going to leave them as intermolecular forces. I do have another video called intermolecular forces if you want a bit more information on what they are. If you don't know what they are, it might be worth stopping this video now, watching that, and then coming back and looking at this. So, I've got these covalent bonds inside the molecules, intermolecular forces between the molecules. Before we move on to this question, let's have a think about what happens when I boil a liquid. So, let's say I've got my liquid hydrogen, I'll have to be very, very cold, in fact, almost practically absolute zero. So, each of these circles represents a H2. And this is my liquid, so I have my intermolecular forces between them. When I boil my simple covalent molecule, it doesn't have to be H2, any simple covalent molecule, all I am doing is breaking my intermolecular forces. I am not breaking the covalent bonds. So how strong these covalent bonds are, whether the fact that these actually make covalent bonds has absolutely no impact on the boiling and melting point. The only thing that affects the boiling and melting point of my simple covalent molecules is the intermolecular forces between them, because that's the only thing I need to break to change them from a liquid into a gas. And the same thing for melting points, it's the same idea. So if we're going to think about why these simple covalent molecules have a very low boiling and melting point, we need to be talking about the intermolecular forces. And in the question, if they give you a specific simple covalent molecule, I would mention the specific type of intermolecular force they use. But like I said, for today, just to keep it shorter, I'm just going to be using the word intermolecular, then it's more general. So what holds them together? Intermolecular forces. 
can't help myself, I'm going to write down what the three intermolecular forces are, you'd have to pick the correct one from this list, depending on what molecule you had. So we've got van der Waals forces, we've got permanent dipole forces, permanent dipole, dipole, and we've got hydrogen bonds. This is proper, proper cool. So, what do we know about the strength of the intermolecular forces? Well, compared to my covalent bonds, compared to my ionic bonds, electrostatic attractions, and metallic bonds, they are ridiculously weak. They're something in the magnitude of hundreds, if not thousands of times weaker than a metallic bond. So, these forces are very weak. So, if they're weak, how much energy are they going to take to break? Not very much. It doesn't, doesn't take much energy to break something that's weak. So, therefore, requires little energy to break. And that's why they have low boiling and melting points, because their intellectual forces don't take much energy to break. So, the temperature doesn't need to be that high. Sorted.